Okay. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Paul. I'm uh, working uh, in the eCube laboratory in Strasbourg and uh, with collaboration with the Mimesis team uh, so I'm here to present you our work on a stable robotic needle insertion in moving, in moving soft tissue during the constraint based inverse unit element simulation. So first a bit of context. So uh, as you all know, we've seen a, a bit of a drift between uh, the use of uh, open surgery to We can see even less invasive surgery, which is a percutaneous minimally invasive surgery, which is the, the basically the using a needle in order to uh, perform the surgery. So it is a uh, it is used, for instance, uh, for a liver to uh, cure a cancer inside of the liver. You can we can uh, cite uh, radio frequency ablation, and so uh, those kind of surgery uh, success is directly linked to uh, uh, to the tip positioning accuracy. Because if you don't position it correctly, you will not uh, burn the, the, the cancer, you will burn the, the good tissue. So uh, this is uh, highly technical because uh, there is no direct vision. You need a sensor, so you need to map what you're seeing through what you are doing. And uh, the organ are moving, and so there, uh, there is a non-trivial deformation of the, uh, of the organ and uh, of the target you uh, need to uh, reach. So there exist many ways to help the surgeon nowadays, such as the simulation like SOFA, and uh, it's, it can be used for uh, learning, planning, or to assist the surgeon using uh, augmented reality. And uh, also there exists a lot of uh, robotic assistance, different robots, such as, for instance, the CityBot, which have been uh, developed in the travel. And, uh, but the problem with those uh, kind of, um, of robots is that they don't take into account the deformation of the structure where they insert. They usually, usually sorry, insert the needle while uh, in the apnea. So uh, the problem we want to accept here is how to efficiently introduce the simulation of the needle tissue interaction inside of the robotic control loop in order to predict and anticipate the structure deformation. So first, let's talk about a bit of uh, control strategy. So we want to, what we propose is to uh, express the uh, procedure, procedure sorry, as a minimization problem. So uh, as you can see here uh, in yellow, this is an objective function that we define at the beginning of the, of the procedure and that we want, we want to minimize. And so uh, for this to be done, uh, we will rely on the actuation of the sixth dot of the needle because uh, in the radio frequency ab ablation, uh, we, can, we can't use a um, bevel tip. So uh, using those six dot, you need to solve an inverse problem, which is the link between the needle base motion and the uh, objective function evolution. So for this to be known, we propose to use an FE simulation inside of the robotic control. So um, this simulation will be uh, used in order to compute a Jacobian linking the, the needle based motion to the objective function evolution. And so uh, th this simulation needs to be as close as possible to the real operation. So it will be, uh, it is uh, constrained by image data. So uh, for instance, uh, image can be used to, uh, to um, follow the robot, to uh, track the robot, and also to track some features inside of the liver, in order to uh, take into account the motion of the liver and some deformation inside of the liver. And also, uh, because we want uh, to, uh, to predict the deformation, we need to simulate the, the interaction between the needle and the liver. So uh, this is done using Lagrangian multipliers. And so, uh, how do we do to uh, compute this uh, Jacobian? In fact, what we, what we do is to perturbate all the dots we, uh, we can on, of the needle base in order to see how the objective function evolve. evolve. As you can see here, we, uh, we perturbate it on the shaft uh, uh, direction, and in fact, in each direction, and then we see the evolution of the, of the objective function, and this way we can compute the Jacobian. So, uh, to go into a bit more details, uh, how do we do this inverse simulation? Because in fact, what uh, is done is we perturbate the needle base, and then we have to solve an entire FAM uh, problem in order to uh, to be able to um, to uh, evaluate the objective function. So uh, the the first the, the more uh, easiest way to do 
it is to, uh, each time we perturbate the base, is to do uh, the entire FEM uh, resolution. So this four, this, uh, these four steps I am uh, displaying here are the main step of uh, FEM uh, resolution using Lagrange Lagrangian multiplier. So uh, this would be the easiest way, but it's quite uh, cost expensive, so uh, time expensive, sorry. So it's, uh, it's too slow for a medical um, application. So UNICEF et al. proposed uh, one first optimization to only uh, loop on the third and the fourth uh, step because they, uh, they saw that, in fact, uh, each time you perturbate the needle base, you start from the same point. So uh, you don't need to, uh, to redefine the constraint and to, uh, to do the free motion multiple times because it's always the same. And so this is way quicker than the, than the whole uh, resolution. And we propose to only loop on the third one um, by expressing the uh, objective as federal constraint. I will, not go, I will not go into much more detail about that, but if you want, you can ask me because it's quite uh, mathematical. And so um, to speak about the results, so here uh, first I will talk about the competition time. So uh, I'd, uh, I um, ran the three ways to solve the, this problem on the same insertion, needle insertion, inside of a gel, which, uh, which, of which size is uh, displayed here. And so you, as you can see, uh, with the full resolution, uh, it's, it's quite slow, in fact. And uh, with the first uh, optimization, there is uh, the time, uh, the execution time was divided by six, which is uh, quite, uh, quite a lot. Uh, and with our optimization, we again divided by two, so uh, in, with uh, regard to the full uh, resolution, we divided by 12 the uh, computation time. And so uh, here is a little video of uh, a needle insertion. So here is a pig, is a liver, uh, pig liver, sorry, uh, extracted from real uh, data, uh, which is moving uh, because of the respiratory motion. And this is a whole simulation. We are simulating the skin and also the liver, and this is the uh, needle insertion performed by our method. So uh, as you can see, the, the white dot is moving forward in a certain uh, velocity in order to, uh, to uh, enforce a, um, a certain time of insertion. And as you can see, our method is quite stable and uh, is able to follow the, 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 the objective uh, along the path, the predefined path, in order to reach the target, which is at the end of the path. And so, to look more on uh, the precision and the stability, so uh, we uh, tried and run the three uh, the three methods on the on the set, on the lever I just showed you with different size of meshes to be uh, more uh, to have more precise and also because uh, it will um, take more time to uh, solve the problem to see if we stay uh, stable. So what is displayed here is not our method; is a method where we don't take into account any deformation any interaction between the needle and the, the, the liver, and even we don't take into account the, the motion of the liver. It's just a needle that is going straight forward, following the, the, the white uh, dot, uh, while in the reality, the uh, liver is moving. So it's, it doesn't uh, give a good uh, precision, and uh, as you can see, the error is oscillating because it doesn't uh, follow the, the respiratory motion. So here are the results of the full resolution. So as you can see, it's not very stable. It uh, explodes uh, with every, uh, every mesh, and it's because uh, it's too slow. And so at the moment, uh, it cannot reach the uh, target anymore, and so uh, it, does, uh, it, does, uh, uh, it does not uh, reach the end. Uh, here is the resolution using uh, the first optimization. So as you can see here, it's not very stable. But uh, for the other mesh, uh, we can we reach the target, but uh, with a not very good uh, accuracy, which is some, which is a uh, uh, really uh, which is uh, uh, worse than the uh, resolution without taking into account the deformations. And uh, with our solution, we are able to be very very stable and to have a precision of less than two millimeters at the end of the the, the path. And uh, it is uh, it doesn't. It stays stable even with a high um, uh, big mesh. So, so uh, in conclusion to this, I would uh, just add that uh, this uh, method is uh, compatible with the other um, other uh, procedures because uh, it, 
here we applied it in, on the needle, uh, needle uh, insertion. It can be used for other um, procedure we, which imply uh, inverse uh, simula inverse uh, problem. So, thank you. Is there any question for Paul? I would. Hi, can you tell us more about your optimization? Uh, yes, but it would require a lot of, uh, you know, because I can. Okay. Um, we have some time. <laughs> <laughs> this. <laughs> yes. Thank you for this question. <laughs> um, so, as I said, this is the four main steps of a simulation uh, of a resolution of a time step using Lagrangian multi multiplier. As it was presented before, there is uh, many uh, many steps involved. You know, like there is the free motion first, it which is the resolution of the of the whole problem without taking into account the, these uh, those uh, uh, constraints. Yes. Then the constraint definition, which is uh, basically a matrix construction construction. Sorry. So it takes a lot of time, but it's necessary. And then there is the constraint solving, which is an iterative step. But because of the constraint definition that was made before, uh, we do this, uh, this solving inside of a more, much smaller uh, space, which is the constraint space. Because what we do is we, um, is we project the, uh, the whole model through the constraint. And so we have all the information in a more, much smaller space. And so after this iterative uh, resolution, you have the motion correction, which is uh, you want to go from this little states, uh, uh, the space, sorry, to the whole space of our problem to uh, to add those forces to the whole model, and so this takes also a lot of time because you need to inverse a big matrix. So what we did is to uh, to uh, avoid, avoid doing the motion correction by uh, expressing our objective as constraints. So when we go inside of this uh, smaller uh, space, we uh, take uh, our, uh, our constraint with us, I mean, <laughs> the objective uh, with us. So the, the objective are in that space, and so the iterative uh, resolution of the constraint of the problem is sufficient enough to be able to, uh, to, uh, to have the, uh, the information of the constraint uh, objective evolution. Because for, just for, inst for uh, a quick example, as you can see here in, in the yellow, there is uh, the objective function of the tip positioning. This can be expressed as a uh, bilateral uh, uh, constraint, in fact, because it's just as if we want the tip to be on the target. So it's a, a violation of, a, of uh, some kind of violation of a, of a constraint. Uh, sorry, of a constraint. Yes. And so what we do is we uh, add this virtual constraint to the, the whole, the rest of the constraint, and while constricting the the, the subspace. And oh, sorry, while solving the, uh, the, the process of uh, the, the iterative process on the third uh, step, we do not we do not apply forces on for this constraint. This way, it does not perturbate the other constraint, and we can have the final uh, violation of uh, those uh, uh, pseudo constraints, which are our objective function. So this this was maybe a bit. Uh, but uh, it will be uh, better explained with the uh, matrices that uh, I don't have this. Any other question? Uh, 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 you know, okay, could you show again the, the, the error curves that, that, you, were, that you were displaying? Yeah. Uh, for, 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 for your methods, you said, uh, I mean, indeed, it was uh, some, some, I think, two, two, mm, two millimeters error uh, and quite constantly yes. during the whole insertion. Do, do you have explanation? Because it means it's not. It basically seems quite uh, stable in time, whatever. How actually how uh, how deep you are in the tissue, and what where does actually these these two millimeters uh, error come from? Seems not related to the to the to the refinement of the mesh. Yeah. So uh, the this is the error to the uh, you know the, the little uh, beam uh, that yeah, was yeah. Uh, moving along the path uh, from the uh, the old insertion. So our method. Because uh, we only uh, use the iterative steps, uh, it's uh, it's only solved on the uh, the uh, smallest uh, space of the constraint, you know. So the size of the mesh doesn't uh, really matters for our um, for our uh, method because we can make uh, 
uh, as much uh, in inverse um, inverse uh, resolution as you want. Uh, it doesn't uh, the the size of the mesh will not uh, really uh, uh, be uh, important. But for the other one, because just for even for the the first uh, um, uh, optimization, because we have new to uh, to reapply the forces on the model. This is uh, this takes time and even more time when we have a bigger uh, mesh. And so here we are we are stable because we are uh, we can uh, solve the problem uh, quick quick enough. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we are stable. But the other um, the other one are unstable because they cannot. Uh, yeah. Stop. Okay. And and so uh, by so it means uh, by by increasing the number of constraints that you would the, the you would set could that improve uh, the the accuracy somehow? Because you said. You know, it's some kind of increasing the number of degrees of freedom instead of doing that on the FEM, doing that on in the constraint space. In in fact, uh, the the um, the constraint I was talking before uh, was uh, was just the objective functions. So uh, we defined uh, um, some objective functions that are required to uh, to uh, perform our our um, our task, but it's not really a parameters because it's it's uh, imposed by the task. So we cannot change this. Uh, Okay.